Despite the Russians' attempts to dislodge the Ukrainian armed forces, the Ukrainian foothold in the Kursk region has existed for two months and is attracting significant forces of the aggressor. This means that the operation has justified itself, believes Israeli military observer Yigal Levin. He noted that with the onset of the autumn rains, the likelihood of the Ukrainian armed forces being completely expelled from the Kursk region is decreasing. At the same time, a small Ukrainian group, estimated to number around 10,000 fighters, is holding down Russian forces numbering around 30,000 to 50,000 people here. If these estimates are correct, then the Ukrainian general staff's plan to diversify resources has succeeded. I suspect that if Sudza is not recaptured before the full winter and cold weather, then the Ukrainians will turn it into a full-fledged defense hub just in time for spring. Levin believes he also drew attention to the fact that Russian aviation and artillery are currently raising villages in the Kursk region to dust. Although this in itself is not great, otherwise these bombs and shells would be flying towards Ukrainian villages and cities, the analyst notes. As reported, Russia has made several attempts to dislodge the Ukrainian armed forces from the Kursk region. Although the Russians have managed to achieve certain tactical successes, President Zelensky assures that the Ukrainian armed forces are holding their designated lines. The chairman of the Council of Reserves of the Ground Forces of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, Ivan Timochko, stated that Russian troops are building up their forces in the Kursk region and apparently Putin has decided to carpet bomb his own territory. I heard information that they try to carry out massive strikes. There is no official result from us yet. What appeared on the maps is so contradictory that it is difficult for me to assess the reality in this direction. I think that today or tomorrow we will have more detailed information. The fact itself is a test of strength. What our brothers in arms from this direction say is that Putin decided on something that most of us understood but considered absolutely illogical. Carpet bombing of the Kursk region, the speaker said. According to him, the enemy is building up and will try to build up its forces in the Kursk region in order to carry out a large-scale operation with the aim of displacing Ukrainian forces. Russian President Vladimir Putin's current theory of victory in Ukraine is aimed at prolonging the fighting. He assumes that his occupying forces can outlast Western support for the Ukrainian armed forces and crush their resistance, winning a war of attrition. This is what analysts at the Institute for the Study of War ISW have pointed out. According to them, Russia will face serious medium and long-term constraints that will undermine these strategic efforts of the aggressor. It is noted that the Kremlin has ordered its army to conduct a year-long offensive along the front line in eastern and northeastern Ukraine. They are aimed at depleting the defense forces and preventing Kiev from accumulating the necessary manpower and material resources to conduct counter-offensive operations that contradict the Russian Federation's Common Front initiative. Putin and the Russian military command likely view maintaining the All Front initiative as a strategic priority. They have shown themselves tolerant of protracted offensive operations that result in gradual, slow progress, far from their intended operational objectives. ISW assessed the aggressor's intentions. They explained that the Russian military is currently trying to eliminate the challenge to its initiative in the theater of military operations in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation following the Ukrainian offensive in early August 2024, while simultaneously maintaining offensive pressure in eastern Ukraine to achieve long-term operational goals. The intensified offensive of the Russian troops in the summer of 2024 to capture Pokrovsk and reduce the wider Ukrainian salient in the west of Donetsk region, experts believe, will reach its culmination in the coming months. Although it is possible that the command of the occupiers will continue to involve them in the general strategic efforts to maintain the initiative on the front line and exhaust the Ukrainian armed forces far beyond this point of operational culmination, regardless of the state of their combat capability. The victory theory of Putin's is based on the Russian armed forces conducting successive offensives over an indefinite period of time, but such attritional attacks will significantly weaken Russia's available manpower and material resources, so Russian forces will have to slow down the pace of the offensive at least in certain parts of the front, which will give the Ukrainian armed forces the opportunity to contest and possibly seize the initiative on the battlefield in these areas. ISW analysts expressed their conviction. Israeli forces in Gaza killed Hamas top leader Yehya Sinwar.
a chief architect of last year's attack on Israel that sparked the war, the military said Thursday. Troops appeared to have run across him in a battle, only to discover afterwards that a body in the rubble was the man Israel has hunted for more than a year. Sinwar has topped Israel's most wanted list since the beginning of the Israel-Hamas war just over a year ago, and his killing strikes a powerful blow to the militant group. There was no immediate confirmation from Hamas of his death. The military confirmed Sinwar's death after conducting DNA tests on a body it said was among three militants killed Wednesday during operations in Gaza. Foreign Minister Israel Katz called Sinwar's killing a military and moral achievement for the Israeli army, saying it would create the possibility to immediately release the hostages. Defense Minister Yov Gallant addressed Hamas fighters, saying it is time to go out, release the hostages, raise your hands, surrender. Sinwar was one of the chief architects of Hamas' attack on Israel on October 7, 2023, and Israel has vowed to kill him since the beginning of its retaliatory campaign in Gaza. He has been Hamas' top leader inside the Gaza Strip for years. An Israeli security official said it appeared that the man who turned out to be Sinwar was killed in a battle, not in a planned targeted airstrike. Photos circulating online showed the body of a man resembling Sinwar with a gaping head wound, dressed in a military-style vest, half buried in the rubble of a destroyed building. The security official confirmed the photos were taken by Israeli security officials at the scene. The Israeli news site N12 said Sinwar appears to have been killed by chance in a battle on Wednesday. Sinwar was imprisoned by Israel from the late 1980s until 2011, and during that time he underwent treatment for brain cancer, leaving Israeli authorities with extensive medical records. President Joe Biden has been briefed on Israel's investigation into whether it killed Sinwar. Sinwar was chosen as Hamas's top leader in July after his predecessor, Ismail Haniyeh, was assassinated in an apparent Israeli strike in the Iranian capital Tehran. Israel has also claimed to have killed the head of Hamas military wing Mohammed Deif in an airstrike, but the group has said he survived.